Hi everyone, this one's to see how my Ryzen 5 6600 that I've had for a few years held up with the new 7800 XT 20 gig card. I had the 6750 and it couldn't handle Unreal Engine pretty well, that was more of a GPU, CPU just blocked out. So without having to get rid of anything I thought, let's try this, we'll put Avatar on, we'll crank it on 4K which shouldn't probably really do. As you can see, it's running 100% of the GPU at the moment. Um, I am locked at 60 frames a second at the moment, running through the 4K 60S Plus. So I'd like to do a few tests without it, using the video card to record as well. As you see, it's actually smooth. It's like solid on the GPU, but completely pliable. Now, it's not really touching the CPU at all, which actually made me happy because I've heard a lot of things of people saying you're getting a lot of CPU bottlenecks because their systems can no longer run it with the higher video cards. I had the 5600 when we first started doing all this I had the RX 580 now that was great it held on there for a few years I got the 6750 no good for Unreal 5 you could play a lot of things on high it handled 1080 reasonably well it could have been better, so I thought I'd take the plunge. In the budget, I only really had the chance to go one more up, so I went for the XT. I love my Intel and my NVIDIA. The budget wasn't there, but I'm impressed with what it does. You can see that the, the frame rate was just everywhere, but the GPU is literally average at 96-100%. My next test, this is for 4K, I dropped it down to 1080. Now, unfortunately, you're not going to see much more above the 60 frames a second. Some of the older games, like Sniper 5, Division 2, they work fantastic at 4K. Some of the latest ones, I don't think I'd try. This is running at 1080. GPU, this is all on Epic settings as well. Anything you can have turned on, I've turned on. And she's doing it, but yet the 5600 is still holding in there, which I'm quite surprised about. And the same thing happened in the next test in the 2K. The CPU is actually... Unless you just want a bit more like performance because you want to upgrade to a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9 because everyone wants to. I didn't have the option. So having the video card running on the NVMe drives and this thing's working fine. So I can still do my editing. I can still do my streaming. I've got the 4K60 MK2 PCIe card for, for the Series X in there. So I can still do that recordings at 4K. And I'm happy with the performance's overall card. I got the Sapphire brand. I did some bit of research on it for once which I never ever do. I was in IT for 27 years professionally in my bubble burst and now I just give it to my partners I used to work with years ago. <laughs> it's easier for me. Anyhow, back to it. It was better than the Gigabyte what I could find out. Definitely better than the MSI and the Asus. So I took the gamble with the Sapphire which is just a bare bones card. There's no superficial pretty lights on it like all the other ones. But it is a solid unit. Yeah, it's got solid cooling on it. The thing, everything in the whole unit is just great. So having the Elgato plugged in, you can't really justify what you're seeing in the 1080 because the numbers would just be skyrocketed. We'll rerun it on the 2K settings. While we look at the benchmarks here, did anyone actually get into the Avatar game? I was a bit skeptical about buying it and it does look pretty as all hell. I've only played it probably for about half an hour. So far, quite good. Let's jump into the 2K side of things. And as you see, then again, beautiful again. So, as a card, if you're going to do it, I've actually got, in the moment, the 6750 in an AMD 3600, which is Gunner's, my son's. And he plays things like BeamNG, stuff like that. The, the complete look of the game, it's given that CPU a whole new life. I had that trying to do Seven Days to Die, and doing the recording and streaming with a HD60 just pass through one and oh my god it was hell but if you do have the 5600 I've only got the standard edition it was all I could get at the time and it's running fantastic if you've got that don't be scared to take the plunge and get a better video card because as you see by the graphics here it runs perfect and for the 7800 XT they recommend a 750 watt power supply go 850 minimum I believe that gives you that little bit extra if you need it for all your other devices now I'm blind in one eye, and for me, this is perfect. For someone that worries about massive frame rates for the highest quality graphics and the faster systems, and they got the budget to do it, go for it by all means. But later on, I'll be getting an Ryzen 9 
and then I'll do this same test again with the same program. We'll see how it goes. But for now, MJ kind of had another little one for us, which makes five. So Ryzen nines have to go in the back burner a little bit longer. Little ones always come first. And this one's pretty cool as well. So I hope these benchmarks just give you an idea of what it can push out. I'm Hamrat. I'd love you to subscribe to the channel and help it grow. Every like, share, subscribe helps. We'll catch you in the next video.